The commissioner of the SEC, uh, Greg Sankey, joins us now, who's been a very busy guy. Frank Frangi, Matt Hayes, as we say hello to the commissioner, Greg Sankey. Greg, how are you? Every time I'm with Matt, he has different hosts. He, he, he can't did. keep yeah. his, his relationship ability. You literally not. just got off the phone. You put the phone down and put the headphones on. <laughs> So I missed the first part. <laughs> there you go. How are you? But I just finished a video conference, so <laughs> I could he? jump on the phone. There you go. So I could put the phone yeah. down. You, yeah. got, you got off the conference with the president yeah. to talk to me. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. No, yeah. it wasn't. And we that keep high. we keep Matt around sometimes. That's ex- that's exactly right. So um, good to see you. Good to see Thank you. you. It's good to be here. Good to have people together again. It, I think it's kind of a neat venue. Yeah. You know, nobody else has goalposts at their media day. <laughs> that's so exactly right. Got that. We do have that. Hey, this has been, and we'll get into the specifics in a second. What a time in college athletics, man. And you spoke to it in your address yesterday. Who there's this, there's the rumors, there's the untrue rumors, there's the stuff that really did happen. Uh, we, t- we go back to last year when Texas and Oklahoma happened at, in Birmingham while we were there. What do you make of all of this? <laughs> uh, am I part of the problem or part of the solution, I guess, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> someplace yeah. in there? Yeah. You know, uh, uh, you, there's a lot of things I could make. Yeah. Like, yeah. wow, I picked the really wrong, wrong time to be a conference commissioner. You know, what, yeah. what happened to the easy days? Yeah. You know, one of the fascinating things, we were in Jacksonville. Uh, actually up at, at uh, Amelia Island, and we had an AD meeting in 2015, yeah. April. Brought all the ADs who worked with Mike Slive back. I had been named. I was not yet commissioner. as was Mike's last AD-only meeting. Roy Kramer came, and he made these toasts. And when he got to me, he said, he's going to need your support because he's going to have to navigate uncharted waters. And I, I recorded that. Okay. I still have it on my phone. Right. He nailed it. That yeah. dude was so smart because we are in unnavigated water, uncharted waters. We are navigating uncharted waters. It is uncomfortable. Uh, it is stressful. It, it, it takes a bit of the joy out of, of, of the work, but that's reality. And so, you know, how, how do we look at it? I think you deal with reality. You say things are changing in society rapidly. Same thing in college athletics. Um, we need to think about who we are, what are our values, how are we going to make decisions. I think we in the Southeastern Conference have done a nice job of that. There are, are changes around us financially, uh, pressures on us legislatively at the state level, questions at the federal level. Um, and, you know, it's a, it's a saying that if you walk in our back door, you'll see printed problems yield to effort. And so we need to apply effort to these problems. All right. So you, you brought it up. You said it's, it was very uncomfortable. It's been very uncomfortable the last, you know, year, year and a half. Um, you two know, and a half. Two, two and, and a half. half. Right. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. well, you honestly, you know what was said about you and the SEC specifically when Texas and Oklahoma left. You know, it was, oh, the SEC went after them. That's the reason that Greg Sankey was on the playoff committee because he was trying to get so many teams in the playoff because he wanted the SEC to be playoff driven. Um, and then the alliance happens, and you've got these three conferences who, oh, by the way, they're officials also taking shots at you and the SEC. And then all of a sudden, not even a year later, the Big Ten turns around and stabs them in the back. <laughs> and takes USC and UCLA. What, like, in that, in that span of time, those 12 months, how absolutely ridiculous has this become? Well, I think it's pretty cool that you don't see unnamed SEC athletics directors um, or conference office officials taking shots at others. Right. Um, you don't see my presidents commenting negatively about somebody else's decision-making. You don't see... That I don't think you see it here from our coaches. You know, I think Lane talked about it because he'd been a head coach in the league, um, and that's a very different approach than what we experienced a year ago. So a year ago, I actually called some colleagues and said, "Hey, look, the 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 old playbook of the SEC doesn't care about anything but football. Uh, th- that's I, I know where that's coming from. If you stop that, and you know th- that particular commissioner said, well, I, I hope you don't think I'm behind that.' I said, "Look, I know a tone is set." Because I've seen this play out. You know, the letter about all they care about is speed. Um, that, that was a few years ago. We were in Destin. That was Jim Delaney, by the way. There, we were in Destin, and the president <laughs> came out and, and, you know, really insulted our universities. Right. Let me just tell you something. Um, there are young people in the next few weeks who will leave their, their homes on the West Coast, in the upper Midwest, on the East Coast, in our region, and fly to our campuses. Um, that is a testament to who we are. So I don't think we have to engage in some of the pettiness that we were subjected to. And, and Matt, I, I, I saw that. You know, I, I try to filter it. People filter it for me. I think I have to see some of it. I have no shame 
in my work to create a 12-team college football playoff. No shame. It has nothing to do with what happened. Um, through every one of these expansion opportunities, you do the best you can with the circumstances that are dealt. I pick up the phone, um, and somebody wants to visit with me, I'm going to have that conversation. And as I said last year, and it's true this year, everybody else would have that conversation as well. Um, we just did a really good job of it at the time. Greg, were you surprised at the USC-UCLA announcement? Did you know it was coming? And do you sense people in the college football landscape were as shocked as maybe all of us were? I did not know it was coming then. I have spoken in meetings about, you know, uh, uh, war gaming, if you will, or it was like a Seinfeld game about risk. You yeah. know, they're right, right. right in the subway, so risk would be a good analysis. And I said, you know, if, if this happens, so if th- these – puzzle pieces move they attract these other puzzle pieces and you have an entirely different dynamic Uh, i think what happened you know a few weeks ago validates our decision a year ago validates it sure fully uh because you you pull back and say what if we hadn't done that and those two had moved and others two had moved and they'd group together and you'd really have uncertainty and and part of what i communicated um you know (laughs) Almost 52, day, 52 weeks ago to the day, the net following week was you have the opportunity if you're at Florida or at LSU or at Ole Miss or Mississippi State or Vanderbilt or Kentucky to control your decision-making right now. And, and I thought that was a really important basis for, for why we, we added the way we did. So I know you don't like hypotheticals, okay? That's the foundation here. Um, the idea is, though, Notre Dame looks like it's getting ready to the sealed deal with NBC for a, a nice chunk of change that will keep them as an independent. If something doesn't happen and they go to the Big Ten and that's the only team the Big Ten takes, you guys are good at 16 still, right? Yeah, that that is, uh, uh, you know, it's like if you say it's a hypothetical, it gives you a <laughs> And I give you the hypothetical? Pass, right? <laughs> a hypothetical pass. No, it's just, <laughs> right, right. So it's let, me, let me go back to reality. <laughs> right, right, right. right. Um, we respect Notre Dame's independence. Right. Uh, I really enjoyed working with Jack Swarbrick uh, on the college football com- playoff committee structure. And, and I had to give and Jack gave. I mean, Jack said, okay, we could be one of the top four teams in the country, yet we'll – be a fifth seed and host right and so there's value in hosting but there's value in not playing a game um and that's a credit to him and and as we walk through some of our issues um i really appreciate the ability to communicate with with jack swarbrick and i respect their independence um the georgia game up there was a phenomenal atmosphere the notre dame game at georgia was a phenomenal atmosphere they have a and m on the schedule Uh, we lost a game with arkansas because of COVID in 2020 uh, they have Alabama on their schedule, I believe, and I think there may be one other. So uh, I, I really like that. And uh, if, if they continue as an independent, we're fine. Um, you asked about, you know, if somebody goes to 17 with somebody. Right. Nobody's staying at 17. So Just I will answer number, this right? one part. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, whole numbers in conference scheduling are problematic. <laughs> and the more divisible your numbers are, the better options you have. So like 14 is you know, like a one, a seven, or excuse me, a one, a two, a seven, and 14. Right. When you're at 16, you got one, two, yeah. four, eight, 16, and then you can actually create some multiples around that. So uh, nobody's going to stay at 17. Uh, that that, that uh, I, I feel confident in making that statement. We almost stayed at 13. Remember, we right. had an A&M. Right. Right. First, and, and, was and it was two months later when we went to 14. So, But we weren't staying at 13. Right. So, so the 20 is a different deal. Like if twenty happens, then it's you got to start at least. Well, that's assessing. another hypothetical. Right. You got to start assessing, though, I mean, right? I, to be fair. Uh, I think any movement we, we've assessed the movement that just took place, right. and uh, yesterday, whether articulately or inartic- inarticulately, I said, we're "Comfortable where we are. We've got connections to our communities, and our states, and our region across the country. That's really important." Um, you guys are bringing in the heavy armor here now. Yeah, right? yeah, the, yeah, the, Dennis Dodd, that's right. right. He's, um, Plus, he's looking down. Yeah, at yeah, so yeah, so right. we go through that evaluation. If somebody goes to 17, we, we'd go through another evaluation. By the way, you did say like minds, too. I, you know, right. I don't know that anybody got that, but that like minds was kind of a little Like-minded dig Like-minded institutions? Yeah, kind of yeah. a little dig at someone else who said the other three conferences that said they were like minds, and then yeah. 12 I months later, they I weren't, they weren't I, so like-minded. The, the post-game evaluation of like my dig, <laughs> like, that I sit there and think, oh, these guys said... You know, I, so, first of all, I was invited into right. any Alliance phone calls right. or events <laughs> right. um, or Zooms or advertising. 
um, or agenda planning. So then so, you weren't like-minded then. Yeah, so I don't know what they said. I, well, they said know, they, they were they like-minded. Like, that's all I'm telling you. <laughs> speaks for itself. <laughs> we, we, in Jacksonville, we have a ton of Florida listeners in Georgia. We also have a ton of FSU, Miami, and Clemson fans. South Carolina as well. And South Carolina as well. they all want to play that, in that, the bowl game. That's right. That's exactly right. But, Greg, all the rumors are what happens with FSU, Miami, Clemson. And I know that's not your league and not yours to speak about. And I respect that. But those are our listeners. Do you anticipate there will be more movement? We know there's this grant of rights that goes to 36. Do you anticipate movement even if it doesn't involve your league? What is your guess? And, and I know it's hard to guess, but what is your guess on that? Um, I ran through expansion issues, and there was this really, I thought, you know, unfortunate, it's like the kind word tweet from Fox Sports football account okay. that listed 12 logos and said, who should be the next four in the Big Ten with Kevin Warren's picture? Uh, I'm not going to do that. Okay. And, and I get that. Uh, it's really good to be here. You know, the Big Ten has added members from the Big East, mm-hmm. the ACC, the Big 12, and now the Pac-12. Um, and last year, to your analysis, uh, a lot of finger pointing about how the SEC conducts itself. I would simply say um, our reality and decision making and very clear representation that people called us speaks for itself on how we operate. And so I, I, I want to respect others. Um, I, I'm fascinated by the turmoil. Yeah. I am fascinated yeah. I, by the yeah. turmoil because there, there, are, there are going to be two 16-team conferences. Uh, there's actually a 16-team conference now in everything except football, and it's 15 in football, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the ACC. And so I, I've always viewed them as, as a stable yeah. uh, entity and want to be respectful. All but right. I, I, I pay attention. So the playoff. A year ago at this event, you, you told me I'd be, I'd be happy with if all teams were at large, all the, all yeah. the participants. So I've been consistent in my view, right? <laughs> you have. So let's right. validate consistent. that. Like yeah. <laughs> yesterday I supposedly made news. I said from the beginning. Yeah. No, a year ago you said that. So, so do you anticipate you will get to 12 now that there were some the people that were pushing on the friction of the pushback for that, for the, for the 12 team? Now one of those people that were pushing back has 16 teams like you do, and they also would like to have more teams in a playoff. So do you anticipate less friction as a, to the 12-team to the playoff? So let me just add consistency of view from, from my perspective. I've said when we go to 16, I'm comfortable staying at four. Right. So I, I don't know how the Big Ten thinks post-expansion. Uh, you know, Kevin and I had a phone call just recognizing and congratulating him on the move, and I wanted to make sure we keep an open line of communication, but we haven't gone in depth on on what they may envision. If you, if you take a step back and you evaluate, like, and I do this to myself, like evaluate my performance, um, you go back to 2018, and you guys wrote about it. There's a list of people that you can see tangibly demanding expansion. Right. On the record, in quotes, not from the Southeastern Conference. Presidents. Presidents. Yes. And, and I'm talking about everybody else. And commissioners, but Larry Scott, to his credit, never never went on the record to say we need to expand. So if you're us and everybody else wants expansion, we could have resisted that. But everybody was asking for expansion within the context of the 12 years, so before the term ended. And part of my role is to say to our members, look, here's the deal. We can just be obstinate and protect what has worked really well for us. Or we can be engaged. And so we chose to be engaged. I mean, literally, this is the, the funniness about, like, my agenda or this. He had this in mind all the time. I, I have an undergraduate degree from the State University of New York College at Cortland. And I am credited for being, like, the evil genius from Cortland <laughs> State. You just, you know, you take things in a straightforward way. So we engage. And I'll tell you my error. And I've said this to some people privately, so first time publicly, is believing that when... When presidents and commissioners said, we want expansion and we want it now, that that was an organizational commitment. And there weren't a lot of caveats in those statements. So go back, reread Dennis Dodd's article. There weren't a lot of, we want expansion, but only if this, this, and this happens. Right. So if you're me, you listen, right? You listen intently. So one of the really key issues was access for conference champions. Well, that was built in. 
Uh, we also thought about, hey, how do you incentivize a conference championship game? Top four conference champions receive buys because they're playing in an extra game. How do you bring in the totality? So I've been asked about competitive imbalance. You're concerned about the future of college football. I can give you no better example than expanding a college football playoff that we don't need to be expanded to 12 teams and offering that with conference access guaranteed that would, uh, on a few years, knock out a Big Ten team at number 12 and a few years knock out my team and I think one time an ACC team in exchange for 20 or 18 or 14 or 16 ranked teams. I mean, th- that's the, the reality that we were at. That's the ability to, to work together. My mistake was when people flipped in those leadership positions, it wasn't an organizational position that was being communicated, if you follow me. I follow you. Instead, and, and so then we got into it. Well, no, we can't do that, and here are the caveats and the things that have to be accommodated. Some that were understandable and some that, that I still don't fully but, understand. But also right. they flipped after after Texas and Oklahoma. Yeah, but to their credit, to the I mean, to their credit, they were, they were, there were, you can go find statements again on the record in June before Texas and Oklahoma editions where there were issues and concerns raised. And, and I, I, I take that at face value. But um, at the beginning, when you go back to why did we start in this process, it was we need expansion. We need it as soon as possible. We had people slamming their hands on the table demanding that. So, uh, you know, COVID interrupted. I've gone way over the sponsor break. COVID, no, 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 COVID, no, no, inter- good. COVID interrupted what would have been an introduction in 2020. Right. But you couldn't, in good faith, really introduce the concept by Zoom in the middle of a crisis. I mean, that's like common sense. And so we had to take a step back because we we're, you know, it was day to day there. Right. Uh, and, and, and then we reengaged. And in January of, uh, of 21, and probably in that time frame heard, we want, we want, whenever we gathered early 21, we want a format and we want it as soon as practically possible. So there you go. Well, final, it didn't work. Yeah, final question. We have to let you go because they're waiting. But I, but I got to ask you this. I'm remiss if I don't. The one thing that you look ticked off about, and all the coaches do too, and I get it, is we don't have any national structure or uniformity among NIL. And it all comes down to state legislatures. And I agree with you. How do we fix that? What do we do? How, how does that get corrected? Well, the, the most direct answer is congressional action. Yeah. So it's like the when you were a kid and, you know, you clean your room and it shouldn't take an act of Congress to clean your room. Yeah, yeah. Well, we need an act of Congress Will that to happen? clean our room. Can we get, can we make, is there a lobby in place for that? Uh, well, certainly. You know, there was an article uh, in early May. George Klyavkov and myself went to D.C. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the only time there's been an article about my D.C. trips. And right. I've been to D.C. multiple times. Right. We were engaged with the firm. We're trying to think about big picture. How do you support student athletes? Uh, how do you solve the NIL problem? And, and so the NIL issue, a couple of basis points. One is we, we foster national competition, FSU playing LSU, yeah. Miami playing at Texas A&M, Utah's playing in Gainesville, Oregon's playing in Georgia. I mean, that's because we have some common understanding of how this is managed. Uh, that's been lost in the conversation, point one. Point two, if you're 17 or 18, high school, junior or senior, what rules do you follow? Right. Do you follow that state or the other state? Well, that's so is, the thing. As you're being recruited, it's enormously unfair to a young person to have the, the structure we have now, which is a patchwork, which point three, we said we don't want a patchwork. Yeah. Uh, but there are reasons that that happened. Like the NCAA can't pass rules that put state universities in conflict with their state laws. I mean, that's just not reality. And, and then lastly, there are a lot of people in an unregulated space making deals. So you can run to the, to the FedEx store, run off a bunch of business cards and say, hey, here's an NIL deal. And that young person may get 10 grand, which right. may seem like a lot of money at that point, or 20 grand, and sign a long-term commitment without the kind of protections we need. I think all of those scream for congressional action. Hey, one more real quick. I know you've got to go. Um, I have an idea, and, and I want I know, I'm sorry. It's always Kat. the last question. I, I, it's an idea. Kat, I, 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 I want to get, not me. I I wanna get your thought Hayes, process okay, on it, okay? Just so you know. Is it possible for the 16 universities in the SEC to say, this is the cap you have to spend? You can spend no more. Is that, is that a possible guardrail? On NIL, NIL issues? Well, you'd be violating state laws right off the bat. Really? And you'd, you'd have an antitrust conversation before you could do that. So it's not – there are no simple solutions to this problem. Understand so you, you've already that. thought of this. Yeah. Is what you're well, me. yeah, but we, we, had a, we had a long conversation in our spring meetings, one of which is should we have a conference policy governing NIL activity? Right, right. Well, here's the problem. 
is I'm not going to have a policy that conflicts with state laws. Right. So we have to begin. If we can't work successfully at the congressional level, then I think we'd be back to pursuing common state laws. And our football coaches said, look, we care about the people in this room. I don't care about everybody else's stuff. We, we, we care about the people in this room. Now, when we put a restrictive policy in, um, let's just say it's about taking two-year college transfers because we've had that. All I hear is, nobody else has that rule. Why do we? So the coaches forget in the moment that they're going to want the same rules right. nationally, That which is why the answer is you know, congressional action can provide us that national standard. All right. The bigger issue than any of that is we're in trouble with Catherine. Okay, I know, that's yeah. the biggest issue, so that is great work. Thank you for spending some time. That's Good the luck. Be- that's the, the luck most on. lengthy uh, college football playoff analysis yeah. that has ever been provided on the radio by me. So <laughs> and I appreciate that. it. It was great. It was great watch stuff. the Twitter. It was, it's going to blow up. Uh, once the it Twitter goes on social media, watch what gets Greg, said. Greg, thank you very much. Okay. We surely thank appreciate you. it. Thank you.